Well, with all the new laptops coming out with Intel's latest 10th gen CPUs, laptops with the i7-9750H have been dropping in price left and right. And the main gear vector is one of them with a $500 price drop and a $1,000 price tag exclusively through the channel's new sponsor, Micro Center. So let's take it for a spin and see what you get for a thousand bucks. Want to pick up the laptop in this video? Maybe had another brand in mind. Well, good, because Micro Center carries every brand you can think of. Just pop into one of the 25 locations across the US, clap your hands twice like you're someone important, and one of Micro Center's expert super nerds will make you feel right at home. Hell, you might even make a new best friend. In case you change your mind and wanted to go full badass with a PC build of your own, they've even got PC parts. Yeah, like all the PC parts. So next time you're looking for a new laptop or parts for your PC, head over to your local Micro Center or go to microcenter.com. Now, Main Gear makes some of the cleanest looking laptops out there, kind of like how Lenovo does their Legion line. No crazy spaceship angular corners or edges, just under 20 millimeters thin, barely over four pounds, and a simple murdered out black paint job makes the Vector one of my favorite gaming laptop designs so far. The power port, USB-C, HDMI out, and two mini display ports are on the back. Not really sure why you'd need too many display ports, but okay. Then on the left and right, there's also two USB 3.1 ports, a single USB 2.0, along with a network port, SD card reader, and audio jacks. Removing the bottom panel and upgrading is as easy as me after a couple of Quaaludes with two SSD slots, access to the RAM, wireless card, and battery. The display is actually pretty good. Uh, we've got 144Hz 1080p panel with nice slim bezels, colors are good, and max brightness is slightly above the industry standard. So it's awesome for gaming, great for media consumption, and good for light content creation. Creation. Unfortunately, watching content with built-in speakers isn't super satisfying with slightly less than average audio quality. The keyboard's pretty sweet. Uh, it does only have four zone lighting, but it is RGB. Same thing with the hinge logo, which can be turned off if you're going for full stealth. And the keys have a nice travel distance with good spacing between them. The deck's nice and clean with no branding stickers. And at the top next to the power button is the performance mode selector button, which is pretty handy when toggling between standard and gaming mode, otherwise known as fun mode and light life's boring mode. The touch style trackpad's pretty average size with decent surface finger glide and it's running Windows precision drivers so it's been largely hassle free. Now battery life on gaming laptops is normally about as short as my patience for children but with the Vector it's even worse with only 2 hours and 40 minutes of runtime with just everyday tasks at 75% brightness or 253 nits. When it comes to performance for a thousand bucks the specs list is pretty impressive but when you've got a laptop with this hardware inside a chassis as thin as a deck of cards it comes with a price and that price is heat like lots of heat. So while stressing both CPU and GPU with the fans at max speed pumping out a pretty loud 56 to 57 dBs, wouldn't you know it, the thermal throttle demon struck again. This time with an average 94 degrees Celsius on the CPU, which cripples boost performance, giving an average clock speed of 2.9 gigahertz with GPU temps at 84 degrees. Now it came with a factory applied 50 millivolt undervolt, so I figured I'd play around and drop it another 50 to see what happens. Yeah, pretty much nothing happened, so I moved on to gaming. <laughs> and gaming is where it shines. Now, depending on which game you're playing, CPU temperatures can vary from high 70s all the way up to the high 90s in some games. But one thing that was consistent was smooth gameplay and high frame rates with the ability to match the display's max refresh rate in competitive titles if you're willing to completely tank the graphics settings. <laughs> Look, here's how you can break down the vector. It's like the Legion Y540 and the Helios 300 got together and had a baby. Mm. Thankfully, it got the Wi-Fi 40's good looks. hey -o! With the performance sort of landing in between the two. It's a wicked value, man, so if you can, rip on over to a Micro Center to check it out in person or hit up the link in the description. But that's it for this one. As always, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and if you did, maybe show me some love with that like button. Subscribe if you're new to my stuff, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to next. Thanks, as always, for watching, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Cheers.